folks. I'm Amos. You'll have to excuse me. I'm in a hurry today. I got to go down to the court. Yes, folks, my old friend the Kingfish is in trouble again. It all started last Tuesday night. You see, it was Kingfish and Sapphire's 20th wedding anniversary coming up. So after supper, Sapphire decided to do a little gentle hinting. Here comes the bride, all dressed in white. Here comes the bride. Honey, would you cut that out? The neighbors will think the cat fell in the washing machine again. <laughs> what is it now? George, don't you know what day tomorrow is? Well, the day being Monday, taking a wild guess, I'd say tomorrow would be Tuesday. George, don't you remember what happened 20 years ago tomorrow? 20 years ago? Oh, yeah. That's the day they sunk the main. That's the day we was married. Well, I knew they were some sunk. <laughs> you is just the meanest man alive, George. Don't nothing ever mean nothing to you? George Stevens, you just ain't got no heart. But Sapphire, hmm, something must happen to the old gal. She can't on there like Tallulah Bulkhead. <laughs> oh, my head. If these pills ain't doing your headache no good, maybe I ought to get you a phenol barber pole. And I had a pill my night last night. Sapphire locked me out the bedroom. I had to sleep on the sofa. You did, huh? And uh, I had a heel. I done forgot every wedding anniversary we ever had. But I'm gonna make it up to her, Andy. This is our 20th wedding anniversary. I'm gonna show her that I got a heart. I'm gonna show her that the faith and the confidence that she's put in me through all these years was really something. I'm gonna make it up to her, Andy, with a beautiful gift. You is, huh? Yeah, Andy. <laughs> in this anniversary, I may even go as high as, uh, Six bucks. Oh. <laughs> the lightning, where's there a good woman's store at around here? Well, now, there's the Barntown Variety Store down the street there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never miss it. Uh, Miss Kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> the cop must have spotted us. We're sitting ducks if we're caught here now. Where's the gun? In here. What'll we do? Out the back way. Well, Andy, we ought to find something pretty nice in here. Hey, there's a lot of bags over here. Yeah. All kinds. A mess of them, too, ain't there? Mm. Now, here's a nice one. Huh, this is what you call stimulated alligator. Yeah, yeah. pretty good, pretty good. Hmm, now this one ain't bad. Only six bucks, too, tax included. Yeah, I like that. Nice and heavy, too. Yeah. May I help you? Uh, yes, miss, I'll take this bag just as it is. Oh, thank you. I'll bring you your chicken, too. Yeah. Well, Andy, our trouble is over. <laughs> yeah, Andy, we're gonna wrap that purse up real nice like it come from Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this show is a heavy bag. Feels like there's something in there. Oh, I guess this is one of them fitted bags with the mirror and stuff inside. You better open it up there, son, and make sure there ain't no price tags in it. Yeah. Mirror. Comb. Lipstick. Let's see that lipstick there. Hmm. <laughs> And them novelty lipsticks made in the shape of a bullet. Did you ever heard of a cosmetic firm 
By the name of Colt 45? No. Holy smokes! A pistol! Yes, he's full of them cold 45 lipsticks. We no use getting panicky here until we make sure of our ground. This thing is probably one of them there uh, cigarette lighters they make in the shape of a gun. And they done put it in the purse there and added uh, inducements. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. A cigarette lighter. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure, ain't it? And in order to make the thing work, all you gotta do is set the trigger like this. You think you ought to take that thing back to the store and find out what goes? Oh, no. Find us, keep us. Oh. You know, Andy, I just thinking, yeah, I could take that thing over to the pawn shop. The hockabilities of this thing is unlimited. Yeah. Something like that ought to bring 30 or 40 bucks. Uh. Uh, careful, that Kingfish. Yeah, after supper, I think I'll run over to one of the pawn shops. Yeah, but be careful with the gun, Kingfish. I think it's against the antitrust laws to carry a gun in New York. Don't worry about me, son. Come along, Kingfish, right again. Yeah, Andy, with 30 or 40 bucks, I could buy Sapphire a real nice pedal instead of this crummy purse. You're gonna see something tonight that's gonna make your eyes pop out. Good heavens. What on earth would George be doing with a gun? I don't care what you say, Frank. I'm gonna close up if you can't come over here. I'm not gonna stay here alone. There's been too many robberies in the neighborhood lately to suit me. Why, just last night they tried to break into the Lameau dress shop. All right, I'll be right home. Yes? What is it? Look, madam, I got a gun here and I want some money. <laughs> Wait a minute here. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Well, of all things. <laughs> operator! Operator! Somebody just tried to hold me up. Get the police! Quick! Quick! <laughs> Hello, Dandy. Come on in. Morning, Kingfish. What's new in the paper? Oh, not a thing, Andy, not a thing. How'd you make out with the gun last night? Not so good, Andy. I still got the thing home in my drawer. Sapphire's still mad at me, too. Wouldn't even speak to me this morning. Oh, that's where it goes, all right. Hmm. I see we had a little excitement around here last night, right here in our neighborhood, too. That's so? Yeah, over at Anderson's pawn shop. Some fella tried to hold it up. 
That's a funny coincidence. I was in Anderson Pawn Shop myself last night. I hope they get the dirty crook. It says, yeah, when the assailant pulled the gun on the proprietor, Ms. Anderson, she fainted. She fainted when I was in there, too. She must do that a lot. Oh, but I think they're going to catch the fellow all right. You got a good description of it right here. According to Ms. Anderson, the hold-up man was wearing a checkered vest, a cutaway coat, and a gray fedora. Andy, holy smoke. They think I was the one who robbed the pawn shop. Why don't you call them up and tell them they done made a mistake? Tell them you found the gun in the place. Yeah, that's the thing to do, all right. Operator, operator, uh, give me the police. Is you out of your head, stupid? You think they're gonna be a cockeyed fool story like that? The next thing I know, I'll be up the river, setting in sanitary confinement. Kingfish, when you throw that place away, you ain't got nothing to back up your story. Well, why did you let me throw it away, you big dummy? Why did I? Well, what you gonna do? I don't know, but I'm getting out of here. Uh, Mr. Kingfish, watch out for us! Slippery steps. Oh. Is your hurt, Kingfish? Uh, no, never mind, Andy. A broken back don't mean a thing at a time like this. You better have another cup of coffee, Kingfish. You shaking something awful. Andy, what in the world is I gonna do? Uh, this is the worst thing that ever happened. Will you pass me the sugar, please? Thank you. With that description they got of you, they're bound to pick you up sooner or later. Andy, what is I gonna do? When Sapphire find this out, it's gonna break her heart. Oh, why did this have to happen on our 20th anniversary? Will you pass the ketchup, please? Thank you. But Andy, I know the first thing I gotta do is change these clothes, then find some way to hide out. Can I get you another cup of coffee, Mrs. Anderson? No, thank you. <laughs> Slept a wink all night. Oh, what is I gonna do? The police is after me. They'll never believe I is innocent. I'm gonna have to run away. Some place where I can lose myself forever. Ah, the Foreign Legion. The French Foreign Legion. I'm allergic to camels. <laughs> I could be a beachcomber. <laughs> I know. I'll sail the seven seas. Got the money for the boot fare. Honey, I ain't got time to go into no detail. I got to get out of town. I write you. Joyce, will you come right back here? Police. 
department, please. I give to you a wooden dose down again. Stevens, are you there? Yes, I ain't going nowhere. You got a visitor? A visitor? Oh, Sapphire, I knew you would come. I knew you wouldn't desert me. Oh, darling, darling, where is you, darling? Here I is, darling. Oh, hell. Five minutes. Okay. Hey, Kingfish, this is a nasty robbery rap they done pinned on you. Calhoun, you got to get me out of here. I am innocent, completely innocent. Innocent? Well, now, that's liable to slow me down a little. I ain't never had a client that is innocent before. Calhoun, <laughs> this is the worst mess I ever done been in. You were my lawyer. Yeah, things look bad. They got a lot of circumstantial evidence against you. But I was happy to tell you that I is getting you out of this mess. Calhoun, how are you going to do it? Never you mind. But when I put you on the stand tomorrow afternoon, we win the case. I've got everything in the bag. Kingfish, I've got a foolproof scheme of how to get you out of this whole mess. When I make my point, the judge is going to throw the case right out of court. That's fine, Calhoun. That's fine. Okay. Hey, boy, come on, get me out of this thing. <laughs> Calhoun, you're a great lawyer. A great lawyer, Calhoun. Uh, incidentally, I have the range to have the opening of your trial delayed till tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. As long as you're going to be in here, you may as well get as many free meals as you can. Uh, we'll see you later. Mama, I don't care how it comes out tomorrow. I'm leaving George for good. I knew he'd come to no good. I knew it the first time he come to the house. Didn't like his looks. I sit too close together. Well, it's all over and done with. I never want to see him nor speak to him again. <laughs> I hope he gets the chair. Now, that is one potato I'd like to see French fried. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Court of Special Session, State of New York, Part 12 is now convening. Case of the People versus George Stevens, attempted armed robber. Judge Hubbard L. Watkins presiding. Order, please. Is the district attorney's office ready? We're ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Proceed. Your Honor, we intend to prove that on the third day of this month, the defendant, George Stevens, entered Anderson's pawn shop with a loaded revolver. We will show it was a cold, calculated attempt to rob this defenseless woman. Will Mrs. Anderson please take the stand? Yes, sir. He pointed a gun at me and said, I want some money. And then, Mrs. Anderson, upon seeing the gun, you fainted, thus frightening the defendant who ran from your store? That's correct. Thank you. That'll be all. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you've testified to the sterling character of Mr. Stevens. You've testified that you've known him for a long, long time. About how long would that be? Oh, 15 or 20 years. I see. Now, would you mind telling the court under just what circumstances you met the defendant? Well, about 18 years ago, at a carnival, I reached in my pocket to get in my wallet and shook hands with Mr. Stevens. <laughs> oh, it ain't like it sounds, mister. Uh, I found out later that collecting wallets was just a hobby of his. <laughs> Order, please. Continue, please. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Counselor. Go ahead and question him, Calhoun. Ask him where I got the gun from. Now, wait a minute. I'm the lawyer here. We don't need him. I got the case in the bag anyway. No questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Your Honor, as counsel for the defense, I emphatically deny the accusations of the prosecutor. I intend to prove that my client entered Allison's pawn shop for the most innocent of reasons, and that robbery was furthest from the mind of this innocent man. <laughs> Your Honor, as my first witness, I would like to call to the stand the defendant, George King Fish Stevens. Step up there, bud. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you? I do. 
Your full name is George Kingfish Stevens? Uh, it is. At this point, Your Honor, I would like to show that my client had no intentions of committing a holdup. And I intend to prove that point beyond the slightest shadow of a doubt. Your Honor, when my client went into that pawn shop, he went in there with a gun that could not possibly be fired under any circumstance whatsoever. And right here and now, I intend to offer conclusive proof to that statement. Your Honor, you can pull the trigger of this revolver as much as you please, and it will not... Your Honor, I would like to ask the court's permission to resign from the case. Yes. Remove the counselor for the defense from this courtroom. <laughs> Mr. Stevens, in the interests of justice, there are a few questions I would like to ask you. You say you found this gun. Where did you find it? Well, Your Honor, that's what I've been trying to see. I, I bought the purse for my wife's anniversary, and the gun was in the purse. So I recited that I'd hock the thing so I could buy my wife a real nice present. Your Honor, this is obviously a trumped up and ridiculous story. You're out of order. Where is this purse now? Well, uh, I done threw it away. Well, Mr. Stevens, you may or may not be telling the truth, but in the absence of this purse, I'm, I'm afraid you haven't got much of a defense. Yes, that's true, Your Honor. Well, we've had a long day. I hereby recess this court until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time I will give my decision in this case. Court dismissed. Yeah, Amos. And then the judge said, in the absence of the purse, Mr. Stevens, I'm afraid you ain't got much of a defense. Yeah, I guess it don't look too good for the kingfish. If he only hadn't thrown that food purse away. But I can't help thinking that the kingfish is innocent and heaven gonna take care of it. Well, I hope heaven do something fast. <laughs> What'd you do that for? <laughs> Conk me on the top of the head with your fist. And I didn't conk you on the head with my fist. Well, somebody done conk me. And ain't nobody here but us two. Oh, don't be silly, Annie. It's only a figment of your imagination. Yeah, I guess that's right. Now you've done it again. Cut it out. And I didn't do nothing. This is a fine time to be playing games when the kingfish is about to go to jail just because he throwed away a purse. Uh, holy smoke, a purse. Amos, that's the purse the kingfish throwed away. Amos? That heaven show sure gives service. <laughs> and so from the contents of this bag, it appears that Mr. Stevens was telling the truth. This bag belonged to a woman who at the present time is in the custody of the law and has confessed to disposing of the bag with a gun in it. Uh, yes, Your Honor, the gun was in there. This establishes and proves your innocence of the robbery charge, Mr. Stevens. But in this entire matter, your actions were not those of a citizen who has respect for law and order. This gun should have been immediately turned over to the police department. Yes, sir. Do you realize that it is against the law in the state of New York to carry a gun? Yes, sir. Do you realize that it is against the law in the state of New York to pawn an article that doesn't belong to you? Yes, sir. I am going to dismiss this case. But tell me one thing, Stevens. If you should ever find a gun like this again, what would you do? Pawn it in New Jersey. 